so my paper is entitled The Struggle is Real Quantitative Study in Student Timeliness to Complete Assignments and Online Courses. Um, this is part of my POP, uh, which is known as Problem of Practice at Baylor University, so I've collected the data. I like to start out with a problem every time I address a situation, and I was sitting here thinking about this, and it's a global pandemic. So what do you say that people don't already know about the pandemic? For the most part, everybody's pretty familiar about what happened. So let's just kind of recap about impacts on daily life during the COVID-19 lockdown. We know that education went viral. The students, of uh, college students, and I'm specifically presenting from a a university level of college students. Our college students are now taking their classes online. They've been thrown into this whole new realm. They have, if they have children, we've got online schooling for their children. Work went virtual. So not only are you trying to balance your children's schoolwork, your schoolwork, you also have to balance your school all in the same house, all at the same time. Some people lost their job, and of course, some people became sick or lost family and friends due to the pandemic. So all types of things that influence, that could influence one's behavior in this virtual um, situation, this virtual reality that we're living in during the global pandemic. So some of the things I wanted to point out are that in a recent study of about 200, or I'm sorry, 2,086 college students, 91 of them, 91% um, of them noted that they had increased stress or anxiety, 81% in disappointment and sadness, 80% in loneliness and isolation, um, financial setback and relocation. So all of these are on high percentage of issues that are happening during the pandemic. And then 76% of them said they had trouble maintaining a routine, which can be key when you're working in an online course. Of course, along with that, 85% uh, of them said that just staying focused on the task at hand and getting schoolwork done and work work done um, was one of the most difficult challenges of the lockdown. So we think about this, um, another study that came out in 2021 from Turkey basically says that students had the inability to focus. So this is a qualitative study, um, not feeling the classroom atmosphere and, being, and not being accustomed to the system itself. So a lot of these issues arise during the COVID pandemic and um, just kind of um, a brief idea is that all of this, as far back as 1993, there are papers stating how depression and anxiety can lead to procrastination. And there is a positive correlation between depression and anxiety and procrastination. So basically as your depression or anxiety increases, so does the procrastination process. So we see a lot of this being an issue as we uh, during the um, pandemic. So it led me to two basic research questions is does the timeliness of submitting course assignments predict student success or course grade in a non majors online science course. And what is the impact of students course grades at varying assignment submission intervals before the due date. So for example, 12, 24, 36, or 48 hours before the due date, is there any impact on the student's grade based on when they turn in an assignment? So just a little bit of a, a researcher perspective, a little bit about me. I have been teaching online since 2011. I am a big proponent of online education. I do also believe that it is very much for the right kind of student. Um, not for everyone. So these are observations I made long before the pandemic in that students who tend to wait until the last minute to turn in assignments don't usually do well, don't always do well. And so when I joined Baylor in 2020, just before the pandemic, January 2020 is when I started, when I went back to school, and I had two goals in mind. I basically have two passions in my life, and one is um, teaching science or teaching chemistry. Another is teaching online. Sometimes those things merge together and I do both. But um, I, was, I was kind of swayed in which direction I wanted to do my pop. And when COVID came along, I was like, let's 
look at timeliness to submitting things. That seems relevant. So I've always kind of noticed this relationship, um, but I didn't actually start collecting the data until fall 21. So just this past fall, post COVID lockdown, but I still feel like the, the information is timely and important. All right, so just a little bit of my methodology. I used an online non-science majors chemistry course. Um, it's at, it's a, my culinary chemistry course. It's at a medium-sized East Texas University with about 10,000 students. Of a class of 198 students, um, only 89 of them consented for me to use their data. So I have a relative, much smaller sample size than I was hoping to work with. And this is a completely asynchronous class. So that means we do not meet Zoom. They have regular deadlines and due dates for different material, but all of it is through uh, video, con or video readings, um, various activities and assignments that they have to do. And of course, uh, virtually interacting with me to discuss things. So what I did is I collected the submission times or essentially the hours before the due date for 12 weekly module assignments. The reason I picked these particular assignments is I have some assignments that are called content mastery assignments. So they're allowed to do them um, repeatedly as it shuffles through questions or examples. Um, in order for them to master the content and then they have a weekly assignment that they're only allowed to do one time that really tests them on their understanding of the material and then of course their final grades and I average the submission times um, and so basically I have one uh one average submission time or the average submission time of their 12 mo weekly module assignments right um, okay, so let's just start with the first research question. And I'm a very big math person, it comes from my science background, but I will try not to bore you guys with all of that and just shoot you with the key details of everything because mostly I would like some feedback. That's my goal is to get some feedback from you guys who have now been teaching virtually. But does um, the first question, does timeliness of submitting course assignments predict student success or course grade in a non-major science class? So what I'm using for this is a statistical relationship called Pearson's R, which is a correlation between two continuous variables. So our two continuous variables in this particular case are course grades and average submission time. Um, if you're anything familiar with Pearson R, all of your information, it's a parametric test, which means that your information has to be normal. Um, if you're like that bell curve, essentially. So if I look at the average hours of submission, um, just to kind of walk through this, it has a little bit of that bell shape to it. Not perfect, but we're going to work with it anyways, as it is. Just to kind of look at what these numbers mean on the graph. If we look at 300, 300 indicates they turned in their, on average, they turned in their assignments 300 hours before the due date negative grades imply that they were late in turning in their assignment and zero indicates that they turned it in just in time. So you can see much like what I've been seeing in um, all of my teaching uh, that close to that zero line is where we have use my, my laser pointer here. You can see that we have this very large uh, peak where all the students decide, hey, the due date's coming up and we need to go ahead and get those things turned in. Um, if we look at the course grade, so this is the overall course grade, we'll notice it does not follow that normal curve that we like to see. Um, so it, so our average hours meets the normality thing, normality check that we need to use a parametric test, but our histogram of our course grades does not. So I went through a transformation process and I'm going to Apollo, oh, let me do this one. Um, the next thing in order to meet a parametric test is that the two continuous variables should be linear. Uh, you can see here that they are not. We have this kind of scales upward and then trends off to the side here. So obviously not completely linear like we would expect to see. So a little bit of problems in the data. 
um, that make it difficult to use Pearson's R di correlation directly. Uh, I'm going to apologize in advance because when I submitted the abstract, I was using a non-parametric test, but uh, upon further analysis, I realized that I could go ahead and use Pearson's R through what we refer to as the transformation process. The transformation process basically says, okay, instead of looking at course grade, we're going to look at what we'll refer to as points deducted. So what were their overall points deducted? And we're going to take the log base two of that, and we're not going to get into the, any of the math terms, but we're basically just going to say we, we plugged it in the calculator and got a different number. And when we did that, we noticed that we get a little bit more of a normal distribution. So this is the histogram of the course, the points off from course grade, but specifically the log base two of it. So notice we had that more normal distribution occurring now. Um, so we're good to use that. Then when we plot our um, transformed course grades versus our average module submission time, we see a much more linear trend associated. So we're good there as well. So um, here's some nasty Pearson's R stuff in case I don't know how much y'all like math, but um, basically the results of the transformed um, hours or the transformed points versus the average hours indicate that there is a statistical significance or correlation because our P is less than 0.001. Um, it's a moderate and negative relationship. And we can see that, oh, I think I, let me, there we go. Um, it's moderate and negative relationship. So we can see that it's negative. This green line here is our negative relationship. And then this equation of the line is essentially our predictor, what we can use to predict the, um, what we can use to predict course grades or points off from students' grades. Um, so essentially, it's really funky because now we've got this log thing. And so plugging it in directly, then you have to unlog it, basically. Uh, I know that's not a word. I'm just making stuff up. Um, but so students, essentially what happens is students who turn in their assignments close to the deadline lose about half as many points as students who submit it a week early. So you can um, kind of use that as a relation a general idea. So people who submit it a week early usually are twice as high in their um, or reduced number of points, obviously, in their submissions versus uh, versus those who turn it in towards the deadline. To be honest, this is the not the impressive or more interesting information to me. It's just a relationship to show that this does exist. But more importantly, I'm interested in uh, the second research question that is, when, it, when is the impact? When do we see this impact in student course grades when they submit uh, information? And what I like about this study is that it is using raw data. So there's no bias from a peer evaluation where students have to reflect on themselves and identify key things. Um, it is straight data. So I wanted to do this because I kind of get frustrated when people say, oh, well, they're just procrastinating. Because in my opinion, online courses just open themselves, open students up to life happening. Like, um, for example, I'm in Baylor, we meet virtually via Zoom each week, um, but it just, it opens up to life happening. I can't explain how many times I've had a sick kid or uh, well, I had my brother-in-law pass away. Just any number of life events that have caused me to wait until the last minute to turn in an assignment. So to say somebody's procrastinating or to use procrastination scales kind of frustrates me because we're impressing an idea on these people. We're making an assumption about them. And I really feel like in online classes, you're especially during the COVID pandemic, you had opened yourself up to just life and making it much more difficult to be a student in a virtual class. 
So I was really more interested in when do we actually see an impact on the students' grades based on submission time. So 12, 24, 36, 48 hours before the due date. So I'm using linear splines. Splines basically um, tell you when you do not have a perfect linear trend, but we can see from here, we kind of actually have two trends. We have a trend of those people who submitted it early in the course or earlier on. And we have this trend of people who submit it right at the deadline or a little after the deadline. So what's really interesting in my opinion is this big void right here this 100 and 200 hours, what we notice in this particularly small sample size is that if you turn it in early, no one's failing. None of these people are failing the course if they turn it in you know, 100 or 200 hours. But at what point in time does that actually change? At what point in time do we go from saying, okay, if they turn it in within this time frame, they're probably not going to fail the course to, well, at some point in time, your grade could be impacted. I'm not going to say you are because we have plenty of students here who are turning in information and doing just fine in the course at the last minute. But we also have a chunk of students here who are waiting until the last minute and obviously doing horrible in the course. So remember, this is their final course grade. This is what is reported A, B, C, or D to the university. So um, I used splines and what we use with a spline is called a knot. So a knot is essentially where does that, what um, that point of inflection, where does the trend line <laughs> change? I'm sorry. So where does the trend line change? So we put the knot at 48 hours. So essentially saying, okay, let's say we change the trend at 48 hours before the due date, at 36 hours before the due date, 24 hours before the due date, and 12 hours before the due date. And essentially what we're looking for is where the slope changes. So if we look at our graph, our chart here, we'll see that after the knot, so after the trend line, we're looking for a significant change in the slope, which for us, it's not a giant. So you can see a gradual change from 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.05 to a much larger gap to 0 0.07. So somewhere between 24 hours and 12 hours, we have this impact. Um, and so basically uh, we have some, an impact, a possible impact. I wanna be very specific that it doesn't mean your grade is going to be bad, but after, somewhere between 24 hours and the due date, you are limiting yourself to covering the material and this could potentially reflect in your grade. So, um, Kind of the results is that there is a moderate negative statistically significant relationship found between submission times and course grades. And also that course grade could be impacted if the average assignment submission times are within 24 hours of the due date. So that's kind of the interesting information that they took there. So really, um, I would like to, so I, I've been working in online education for a long time. And I really would love to get some new perspective from people who are now practicing virtual learning. And so, but these are some of my recommendations for this particular situation is what I'm gonna say create distributive practices. So there is a researcher, Dunlowski, he basically says that distributive learning is the best task in order to maintain and retain information. So what that means is essentially constantly working on the material instead of cramming it all at one specific time. So um, I say create distributive practices by making assignments due at different times of the week. So maybe give them a simpler assignment midway through the week so that they're actually looking at the material and then later on give them another one. Obviously there are drawbacks to this because some people only have time to work on their online class on the weekends when they're not working. Um, so it's very balanced, it's a struggle and I'm always a, a person who thinks that online education is very much 
for the right type of people. Um, I also suggest that students create like an accountability calendar, something that schedules times for classes or working or studying. So actually setting aside that time. We do this a lot in our lives. We don't think about it. We take things that are priority to us. We set aside time to do. So if that's go to church or brush our teeth or sleep or whatever the case may be, if it's important, we make time to do it. So if education is important. I suggest they make some type of an accountability calendar and schedule times to actually work. And then, of course, one of the biggest things I have is always have an open dialogue with your students so they feel comfortable communicating with you. I am pretty lenient in that if there is a life happens moment, um, bringing the you know, having that open dialogue with your students so they feel comfortable telling you so that you can work with them and they don't fall behind or rush because they're trying to meet a deadline. Um, they're much likely to find uh, help in that way. So some future work that I want to do with this. This was originally supposed to do a mix, be a mixed method study. But um, I'm going to do a follow up qualitative study with some of our people in that 20 zero to 24 hour submission range to identify different the different nuances as to why people wait until that time to submit their assignments. I'm really interested in what are the factors. We, we all talk about procrastination, but it's not always procrastination. That's not what's doing it. So what are the factors? Um, some of it is procrastination. Some people get that that. Um, urge to that adrenaline from waiting until the last minute and you know they probably perform well because that's what stimulates them but other people have life uh, just any number of things that could be going on um i would like to also study themes in the data so as i was crunching numbers with each module assignment um i noticed themes in some of the people's information so their average times some people i call them the as soon as it opens people so as soon as the assignment's available they're going to do it all right then and be done with it i have uh, another one that's called the two weeker who so what basically happens in my class is assignments are open for a week and a half and every wednesday the next module opens so i see some people on monday when all the assignments are due they go ahead, they wait until the last minute to do one week's assignment, but then also go ahead and do the next week's assignments way early. So they just sit down and do two work, weeks worth of work during one time. So I call them the two weeker. And then of course the last minute or who just waits until the last minute to turn everything in. And then a colleague of mine, um, we collected some other demographic data and a colleague of mine is very interested in the submission times versus um, men and women. Um, uh, with a, we're trending towards there being a significance there in the data with the Pearson R relationship, but um, we need we think we need a bigger sample size in order to actually identify that. So any questions? That's kind of mostly I'd love to get some feedback from you guys, uh, what y'all have experienced, what you've noticed from different perspectives and different areas. So when the questions open up, um, I would love to hear that.